Rent a Girlfriend is a comedy, romance, anime slash manga series animated by TMS Entertainment and originally written and drawn by Reiji Miyajima. And it sucks. Now, boys, my YouTube channel is damn near entirely comprised of me making a heck of a lot of videos trashing on Western media, Webtoon, and etc. And furthermore, many of my good examples that I present in contrast to them are great anime and manga. Yeah, that's right. I always do praise the anime and manga industry for its fantastic pieces of work, and I still valiantly do, because there's just... Well, more of them. But oh, do not get me wrong when I give it all that praise. This media ecosystem has lots of its own fair share of problems. Just like how Webtoon and Western media in general have its own fair share of garbage that's the absolute lowest of low quality, but at the same time is specifically designed to attract as many brain-dead people as possible, such as Boss Baby, every terrible Disney remake, and etc. Anime and manga are no different with that kind of media, such as Sword Art Online, Gate, and of course, Rent-A-Girlfriend. Now, when I first saw the trailers for this anime on YouTube, like, ages ago, I figured the anime was good, I, like, I just assumed it was. What with its nifty art style, vibrant character designs, and base plot being about an actual freelance job in Japan. I never actually watched the anime after seeing the trailer, because I was just busy at the time. But I figured, I just made the generous assumption that the story would be some kind of complex romance about how this weird Japanese-exclusive job works, and that this would also tackle the nuanced subject of being hired by somebody as a temporary non-sexual love interest for a brief period of time. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. Not only is it the most trite, generic, uninspired, basic bitch, pseudo-harem garbage I have ever witnessed. But it also goes beyond that and is actually legit revolting to watch sometimes. Boys, this anime scares me. It actually, legitimately scares me. So, why? Why does this scare me? And how is this so bad? Well, you're going to find out in this review series. This is the first entry into our review series, obviously, so we're just gonna sit here and establish all the foundational issues with this garbage anime. That is my fancy way of saying, we're just gonna skim episode one and just point out all the surface level issues. We'll dig deeper as the review series progresses. Let's begin. Our epic tale starts off with... a f***ing loser. This is Kazuya. Kazuya is a bitter loser douchebag man-baby who had a basically fake relationship with a bitchy girl who quickly dumped him like yesterday's garbage because... Well, you know, he's an effing loser. I don't know. I could very easily continue and hammer down this point and bring up that one part where he says that he finds the thought of someone banging said ex-girlfriend to be hot. I could spend an entire five minutes ranting about how this guy is a characterless piece of trash who basically has no personality traits outside of being a sexless virginal weirdo whose only purpose in the plot is to try his best to interact with super prey girls. I, I could go even further to explain how it's somehow even more cringe-inducing in the manga, but I will do none of the sort. Not yet, anyway. So, as a result of our boy Kazuya writhing in his loserdom, he calls upon a rental girlfriend to hopefully dry his tears, and thus begins the... Uh, fateful meeting with the main girl of this garbage, Chizuru. Chizuru is the closest to a normally functioning human being there is to this entire anime. I am serious, she's the only person that acts like an actual human being, and therefore is someone you will automatically sympathize with. Y you'll see, you'll get what I mean, don't worry. Okay, so yeah, they go on their little date, and things go very quickly. A as in, the entire scene itself in the anime is very quickly paced. And the pair hit it off really well. After the date is over, Kazuya feels a genuine sense of romantic passion as he holds hands with her on their walk across town. You know, until he realizes that this is all just a part of Chizuru's act. What Kazuya experienced is nothing more than a well-rehearsed act. Because, well, you know, she's a rental girlfriend. It's literally her job to do this. But regardless of that obvious knowledge, Kazuya gets extremely triggered after falling under her evil spell. It was all just an act? 
<sighs> Holding hands is just part of her routine? How dare she toy with my heart like that? I need to give her a piece of my mind. <sighs> I... I, I what? You're mad at that girl for doing her job properly? Ugh. Okay, so, boys, you know how Team Four Star's Dragon Ball Z parody had a Krillin-owned count? Yeah, well, I think my review series, or this entire anime in general, should just have a Kazuya being a loser douche count. Because you're gonna see him doing this a lot. Anyway, in a very petty act of revenge for performing the evil, heinous act of doing her job properly, he posts up a negative review on her dating profile and sets up a second date with her with all of the intentions of being a dick to her on purpose. Kazuya takes her to the aquarium, and despite Chizuru going out of her way to do a little bit of homework and learn distinct knowledge of fish in said aquarium in order to drum up a conversation with him, he still publicly lashes out like a man-child, shouting at her for essentially no good reason. This anime feels like it was made by an actual incel. Now, on the bright side of the situation, two things happen afterwards. One, Chizuru does in fact chew this guy's ass out for making a jackass out of himself up until this point. And two, and way more importantly in my opinion, Kazuya is in fact aware of the fact that he is in the wrong here. The guy is in emotional turmoil as a result of the last girl he was with being a bitch, but this does not give him any excuse to be an equivocal bitch to a random stranger who has no context and doesn't need to have context into your life. Kazuya seems to be realizing this, what with audibly acknowledging his own assness in thought. And at this point in the show, if you're anything like me, you would assume that after seeing the first 10 minutes of this episode, where the MC seems to develop a lick of self-awareness, that this story would be about slowly becoming a better, more mature young adult in college via the service of rental girlfriends or something like that, I don't know. That's what I thought this plot was going to be. But no. That's not what happens at all. What actually happens is that, <sighs> well, anime happens. It's really, really, really effing frustrating. Just let me show you. In a moment of what feels like the plot suddenly twisting itself around to be a generic rom-com, dumbass Kazuya suddenly gets a <gasps> terrifying phone call that her aunt or, or, or grandma, uh, honestly, I forgot who even cares, is suddenly passed out in the hospital. Oh no. And so he forgets all about Chizuru and immediately makes a bum rush to the hospital, acting as if he didn't just make a jackass out of himself in public for no good reason. Chizuru, who obviously doesn't need to continue wasting her time with this idiot, decides to follow him for some reason. It makes absolutely no sense, but hey, who cares? Logic all ceases to exist at this point in the show. Kazuya and Chizuru both go to the hospital and, and meet the, the dying aunt or whatever, and yeah, y you can probably guess where this is going at this point. Oh no, the dying grandma or whatever, who really hopes Kazuya will be happy, sees the girl that he was renting out. And now that Chizuru feels bad about his ill family member, now she just has to keep playing the part of Kazuya's girlfriend. Oh no, you know what that means guys, now they both have to keep pretending to be together, oh no. Man, it sure would be totally crazy, completely unexpected, and totally not cliche garbage to have Chizuru just catch feelings for him for whatever reason. Oh my god, so, so wait, what the f***? The show starts off pantomiming a character growth story and then just twists itself around into being a, a basic bitch comedy romance? Like, this is so effing stupid. Okay, look, I get it. It's a Japanese cartoon. It's not gonna be that realistic, but this is just effing lazy, boys. Like, just getting up and saying anime logic is no excuse for what's happening right now in this awful show. Y you just spent the first 10 minutes of this garbage trying to make the main dude look like a turbo douche that needs to grow up, and then you turn around and do this fan servicey bullshit courtesy of trite-ass anime cliches. Obviously, so you can just establish one of those cheap unrequited love scenarios that you'd expect to see in an Adam Sandler movie. You can't just have basic stuff not make sense in your story and then turn around and say, oh well man, it's an anime, just don't think too hard about it, bro. Like, that's just lazy writing, man. Uh, okay, look, let me hit the brakes for a second and bring up one of my favorite sports anime right now. Blue Lock. In this anime, when the main dude, Isagi Yoichi, is in a desperate situation where he needs to win so he can stay in that weird soccer concentration camp that the anime's all about, th the show doesn't just go, oh ho ho, 
Dude, it's anime logic, so that just means he wins. Don't think too hard about it, bro. No, that's not what happens in that show at all. What happens in Blue Lock is that the authors use their soccer knowledge to write a satisfying victory for Isagi and thusly continue the story. Because, you know... That's how writing conflicts and solutions work on a basic fundamental level. Meanwhile, Rent a Girlfriend, an anime that stems from a very real thing in Japan that could easily be fleshed out, provided the author actually had knowledge into the subject, doesn't use anything smart or thought-provoking to continuate the story at all. Oh, dude, it's a romantic comedy. Just turn your brain off, bro. Like, no, dude, I'm not gonna turn my brain off when I see bad effing writing that only serves to drag out this cookie-cutter romantic tension. But yeah, you see that? You see how the MC seemingly begins to develop a lick of self-awareness of his own toxicity, but then the plot kind of just veers all over the place just to perpetuate the non-existent romantic tension that the mangaka and the showrunners think is happening right now? Yeah, let me go ahead and just drop a spoiler for you. That happens all the time. The main dude's cancerous attitude does not improve, and this guy never grows as a person. And as if that's not frustrating alone, the show also tries to make it look like it's all cute and funny and romantic too. L like, no bro, this is not romantic and touching. This is effing stalkerish and guilt trippy and gross. H how do you, like, I'm just trying to find out. How do you not realize how sick this context is where straight up the main dude's only form of connection to the main girl is just guilt tripping thanks to his hospitalized family member? <sighs> At this point, it would be very easy to make the educated assumption based off of the way the show is going and also the cover of the anime especially that now this show just wants to be a basic bitch romance harem thing that is extremely dragged out for the sake of estrogen dating waifu popularizing and of course merch sales i'm making all these super cynical remarks about this type of anime but i'm not necessarily saying that these type of romances are objectively bad there's actually a few anime and manga i really like that do do this but for this anime in particular this is factually bad. Like, objectively bad. I, I mean, do I really even need to explain why? Why should anyone even care? Why should I care about these two characters having any form of actual romantic tension when it's a relation between a completely uninteresting girl forced into a bad situation and some douchebag that never grows as a person? Why should I care about the blossoming romance between this douchebag creep who's literally just guilt tripping random innocent people into his problems? Why would I want to keep watching episodes of this garbage when it's tonally whiplashing, making no sense, is cringy as hell, and is just legit revolting to watch. No wonder this anime is so aggressively hated. I, I heard the manga is somehow even worse, so get ready for that. Uh, whatever, after that stupid ass scene, dumbass Kazuya goes to college the next day, and then, once again, lazy ass writing, I mean, anime logic happens. Oh ho ho, conveniently, he stumbled into Chizuru again at school. Oh no, what romantic tension will happen now, guys? Oh my god, aren't you excited? <sighs> and yeah, whatever, that's the first episode. Okay, so, there's a lot to unpack here. This entire first episode is trying to be a typical comedy romance, right? Oh, the main guy's a loser, and the main girls are so pretty, and fate just keeps forcing them into meeting each other, oh no! Like, that's what the show's going for, right? But, um, um, that's actually not what's happening at all. L like, boys, I've been framing this entire scenario to be that this main character's toxic, childish attitude is causing issues for this otherwise unsuspecting girl, right? But that is not the way this show itself, as in the anime's own narrative, frames this situation. In fact, if you actually saw the way this show was framing this stuff, you would think I was talking about a completely different anime, because the way that the show itself frames it is as if these two characters have some real bond that needs to be fleshed out, and you really want to see these two keep being together after seeing them both hit it off at the start of the episode, and oh, it's so cute and funny. Like, nah, bro, it's not. This is not a situation where two characters have a fateful meeting where them two coming together will be really great and fulfilling for them. This is a really gross situation where one loser nerd man-child drags an innocent person into his own personal drama. So, after covering episode one, y you know, the thing that's supposed to be the hook of the series, we have the following. We have a main character who's a loser-ass douche who drags innocent people into his own personal problems, a main girl who so far only 
only serves as a fan service generator and is basically being guilt tripped into being involved in the story, a plot that's about as logical as flat earth theory, and a subject matter that stems from a real life thing being handled with zero tact. And guess what? It's one of the highest selling manga there was in 2021, outperforming anything in the West at the time. This is the reason why this anime scares me. Uh, look, I'm not going to pretend the anime industry is sacred. Like I said, it has its own share of cynical garbage. But I do genuinely believe that the Japanese media industry is one of the very few last bastions of good, entertaining, and nuanced media, untainted by modern day politics. Rent a Girlfriend's existence is a problem, but on top of that, the fact that it is popular, so popular that it outsells anything in the Western media sphere, that's kind of scary, because this stuff may just set a standard in the industry. It might send all other creators a message, and that message is, hey, you don't need to try. You don't need to try at all. Just produce some stock factory model generic romances with weird fetish inserts. As long as the waifus are drawn and animated really well, then people will fall in love and gobble this shit down like it's Mickey D's. And that is a horrible thing for people to witness. Again, I don't think the anime industry is perfect, but I do want it to remain untainted by the cynicism of just catering only to the hormonal desires of their sheltered incel demographical portions. That's all I'm saying. So, stay tuned boys, we're only just getting started. If you think it's already as bad as it is, just <sighs> strap in. It, it somehow only gets worse from here. To be continued in part two. Let's get to the Patreon roll call. My $10 supporters are Cute Eater, Jack G, Joseph Vincent, Sar Bombaclap, Procrastinator Dave, Skyer, Sindrin7, and Stormy Knight. And of course, we have our $5 supporters. They are appreciated just as much as our $10 Patreons. If you'd like to be in the credits of my videos as well, just catch me on patreon.com slash blacklightjack. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.